Hi guys, been a little while since I, I made my last video. Uh, I thought you might want to see this. This is a Pi 5, uh, 8 gig version, mounted in a mini ITX case, and it's using an I.O. board, uh, a Pi Station ITX board to be specific from 8 bits forever, or at least that's where I got it from. I'm not sure if they're still making them at the moment, but uh, I'll put the link to their website in the description for the video so you, uh, so you can go check them out. Um, not really any other additions here. We've got the battery just mounted here for the real-time clock. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. We're using the power supply uh, specifically for the Pi 5, which seems to be the only one that's really going to work well enough to support the SSD that we've got mounted here. So we're also booting off the SSD and currently we've got 64-bit Ubuntu uh, installed as the OS. If we take a quick look around the back, it'll be a bit tricky to adjust the camera, but um, okay, so we're using the HDMI out for video, we're using the Ethernet in this case, uh, we've got a number of USB ports on the on the uh, the rear of the case, and there's also some more on the side. And I'm using the uh, the USB header on the I/O board to uh, to get all the connections. Uh, what else can I tell you? So the I/O board does actually support power in via a micro USB, but um, what I'm finding is that it's not quite enough to drive the SSD if I run it that way. So I'm actually running the power straight in directly onto the uh, onto the Raspberry Pi 5. And that seems to be fine. So what else can I tell you about this? Uh, obviously we've got a, a Pi sticker on the front for what it's worth. And there is a momentary switch on the front of the case, but that's not actually connected. Now it could be, in theory, J2, I believe it is, on the Pi 5, which doesn't actually come with a, any uh, any pins, but um, but you could obviously solder the connections, will work with a momentary switch, although I'm not sure whether it's um, as yet officially supported, but I did test it and it seemed to work. But since I'm not overly bothered about that, I didn't bother connecting it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I only popped the uh, the cover off because I wanted to uh, to show you what was what. But the um, the real point of this video is to show you some, uh, some AI uh, using large language models, LLMs, running on a Pi 5. Now, it's not fast, it's only got four cores, this is only running barefoot as well at um, 2.4 gigs, but, um, but it works. So I'm going to pause the video there and get things set up and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what's what. Uh, it's worth mentioning actually that, you see the HDMI cable here, is actually connected to my Lenovo, but I'm only using that as a monitor in this instance. So, uh, so there's no cheating. It's literally just the only only box that I've got handy that I can use as a monitor, but uh, lacking on space. So, give me a sec. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've just restarted the uh, the Pi Five, so we can do this from scratch. Now, I'm afraid I don't have a, a capture card handy at the moment so we're just going to have to screen scrape it but hopefully you'll be able to see well enough what's going on. So you can see here we're running Ubuntu. I'll show you near fetch in a second so you can see exactly what the configuration of the machine is. Okay. Okay, and there you go, finally we're at the uh, the desktop. So I'm just gonna pull up a, a terminal window and we'll have a look at NeoFetch. Okay, so there, if I zoom in a bit, hopefully you'll be able to see that a little better. So there you can see we're running Ubuntu 23.10. Uh, we're running on Raspberry Pi 5 Model B and what else? Is of any consequence. So you can see there, uh, CPU, uh, we're not overclocked, we're running um, barefoot at 2.4 gigahertz, and we've got an 8 gig uh, version of the uh, the Pi 5. So that's pretty much all we need to know there. Um, there's a couple of uh, a couple of products that I can show you. 
So the simplest is this one, Alpaca Chat. And this is using a uh, 7B uh, Q4, so a 7 billion parameter uh, quantized to four bit um, LLM, large language model. And if we have a quick look in the, uh, the directory structure, okay, so it's in there, alpaca.cpp. So this is actually written in C++, uh, which means that it runs quite efficiently, even on a little Raspberry Pi 5. Okay, and in there, uh, we've got one executable, uh, one binary that counts. So here, chat is what we're actually using, but I've got, um, oh, and actually before we go on to the, uh, the script, there's, the LLM that we're using, so Alpaca 7BQ4.bin. And if we have a look at the script that I've created there, so that's just gonna make sure it goes into the right directory. Um, other than that, it's gonna run chat minus M to specify the large language model that we wanna use. So in theory, we could swap that out for something else if we wanted to but this is actually the, uh, the default, so we'll run with this for now. Uh, minus I to make it interactive. And then what I'm doing here is I'm splitting the output between the, uh, the terminal window, so slash dev TTY, so using T to split it and feed uh, the terminal window and also pipe it out to eSpeak as well so that we can hear it. Now, one thing to, um, to bear in mind, uh, eSpeak will work fine, except that there are some uh, escape characters that are also going to come out in the uh, in the stream so you'll hear that sorry it would have taken me uh, I would have had to write a bit more code to uh, to filter those out so we'll just have to uh, to put up with that for the time being but um, if we look at this desktop shortcut and I say show in files you can see that that's mapped to alpaca-chat.desktop if we look at that with an editor you can see that that is actually going to run alpaca.cpp slash chat.sh, which is the script that we were just looking at. So no smoke and mirrors, that's what it's doing. It's just a bit more convenient to have it on the desktop. So we can get rid of that now, and we'll run that one up. Now it takes a little while to, uh, sorry, you didn't see, so I've just launched the alpaca chat terminal desktop shortcut. And it's going to take just a little while to uh, to initialize the large language model but once it's uh, up and running it should be quite responsive there we go so it's up in a 24 by 80 window hopefully this will make it a little easier for you guys to read as well okay so now you can see it's loading up the uh, the large language model and it's uh, it's effectively going to read all of that into ram And you should hear it initially. 33M. There you go. And there, there's the control characters or the escape characters that I was talking about. So let's ask it something simple to start with, like, you know, what is the capital of the UK? One M thirty two M zero M the capital of the UK is London dot zero M. Okay, so it's not fast, but it's um it's quick enough that it's it's usable. Um so just to be clear, this is not using chat GPT, this is running the um the large language model locally. It's processing it on the Raspberry Pi. Uh so let's give it a bit more of a challenge. Uh so something like uh write 250 words to discuss the impact of climate change on planet Earth. Okay. Now, 
Now it'll appear to be sitting, thinking for a while, or actually that's, that's not bad, it's turned it around quite quickly. But yeah, basically it'll, it's gonna front end its processing of course, and then once it's uh, it's finished processing it, it'll, uh, it'll then write it to screen and eventually it'll get round to piping it out to the speech synth. Now, I don't know whether it's picking it up on the uh, the mic um, on the camera, but uh, as it's processing the request, it's spinning all the CPUs up, uh, all, the, all the CPU cores, and you can hear the fan kicking in. 1M, 32M, 0M climate change has become one of Earth's most pressing issues, and its effects are being felt around the world and across all ecosystems. Rising temperatures have caused sea levels to rise significantly since pre-industrial times. This is leading to increased flooding in coastal areas, especially during storm events when combined with rising tides. Warmer oceans also lead to more intense hurricanes as warming waters fuel stronger and longer lasting storms. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that there. But, um, but you get the idea, that's, that's working fine.